The thing is that when uh, Irfan came to you, really, he came to you with a lot of affection. He came uh, onto the set uh, as a person who w would relate to just the person in front of him. He was never a star. He never played a star. He was uh, and remains, I think, in all our memories, someone who would sit beside you and would be more concerned about how you were doing than uh, really about himself. A fellow director, Danny Boyle, said today that he effortlessly bridged two cultures. He made that transition to Hollywood very easily. Well, the thing is, you know, as an actor, one thing that strikes you about Irfan immediately is that he never uh, played a stereotype. He never uh, put on a mask. He went always deep into himself and he tried to bring us, not emotions, but evoke for us what it meant to be in the situation that uh, as a character he might find himself. So he never tried to show us how to feel. What he would always try, I think, is to allow us to feel through the evocations of really tiny, very subtle things that he would do with uh, his uh, wonderful eyes, with, with his beautiful hands, just the shift in his posture. He would evoke things for us so that mm. we would live the character inside ourselves. Mm. We would become the character. And I think many, many uh, people, in fact, his audiences all over the world probably saw that. They saw that he was a man who had no pretensions. He was an actor who did not try to show off. He was an actor who was not trying to celebrate himself in doing something. He was an actor who was trying to show us really, very simply, the immensity of being a human being. Mm. That is, I think, his attempt all the time. So that he actually worked uh, in Bollywood, in Hollywood. He worked uh, in Bangladesh. He worked, uh, you know, in, in Europe. Uh, I think it's because many of the people who worked with him saw that. Yeah. He came to them openly. He came to them ready to cross any barriers. There are, there are two peculiarities that I want to get out for our viewers that I've read about um, that, yes. that, that are really interesting about him. First, the way that he rehearsed his lines. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm full of so many memories at this moment. Uh, when we were shooting Kissa, I came across him one day and I was behind him. And we were out in the open in, in a field and I heard him kind of humming, singing. But it was a very strange uh, song that uh, he was singing because the song was made up of the dialogues of the film. And I listened to him for quite a while and then I understood that what he was trying to do really is to find the, the tone, the inflection that really lies under the drama, you know, not to speak the dialogue as uh, a confrontation or a question or, you know, any emotional, uh, d emotionally defined feeling, but almost as a melody so yeah. that we felt underneath what he was saying, a deeper connection to the person that he was playing on screen. Wonderful, wonderful. I've only got a minute left, but I want to get in the second one, and that is that you could always find him because he was somewhere near a kite. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, on both our films, uh, when we did Kissa as well as The Song of Scorpions, he would often disappear uh, during break times and at lunchtime. And the best, actually everyone of, uh, of us on the set knew that we could find him immediately because we just had to look up into the sky. And wherever we saw a kite flying, we <laughs> would know that Irfan was there. That's lovely. He was really obsessed <laughs> with kite flying. He felt that something in the flying of the kites taught him how to be an actor. 